Hello everyone and welcome to another Foul Original. In 1989, two video games were released to capitalise on the growing mainstream popularity of the WWE, then WWF. WWF WrestleMania was released on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Please check out our previous video in this series for the story on that. The other was the first licensed video game for the arcade system, WWF Superstars. This game was manufactured by Technos Japan and released in May of 1989 in North America. The matches in this game are all tag team matches player. This is played through as a single player teaming with a computer control character tagging in and out, two people teaming up to take on the computer, or playing head to head on opposite sides of the ring. The gameplay is based on a grappling and attack system. When a player has initiated a grapple, they can throw them or Irish whip them into the ropes. They can also go into a headlock, allowing them to perform two character unique grapple moves. Each of the wrestlers also have standing strikes such as punches and kicks, running attacks like shoulder blocks, running counters like big back body drops, ground attacks like elbow drops, and some top rope moves too. The matches also now have a referee present in the ring. He's only there to count out the wrestlers or pins, so no he can't be attacked accidentally or on purpose. Another big change is that you can now exit the ring to continue the brawl to the outside. Players can be thrown out with an attack, and once outside, both players have the count of 20 to make it back into the ring. There is a table that can be picked up and used to attack your opponent, and this won't lead to a disqualification. Additionally, if both legal men leave the ring at the same time, then their CPU control partners will automatically join them. While fighting outside, every now and then, one of the two team's CPU partners will disappear off screen and return with a folding chair. Unfortunately, the table and the chair cannot be brought into the ring and must be used on the outside. After your team has won three matches, you get to challenge the team of the Mega Bucks. This team is made up of the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase and Andre the Giant. Interestingly, Andre cannot be attacked with grapples and is only affected by other attacks like punches and clotheslines. If you manage to win that match, you get a congratulations on screen from Miss Elizabeth, get a newspaper headline declaring you and your tag partner the new champions. Your team will then go through another three matches with a final match against Ted DiBiase and Andre the Giant. If you win this, then you get an end screen saying, great matches, you've beaten the best of the best. Now you too can be called a superstar. You will have an image of your team plus the mega bucks with the words, the end and the old WWF logo. This being the actual end of the game. The game's six playable characters are Hulk Hogan, Macho Man Randy Savage, The Ultimate Warrior, Big Boss Man, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and The Honky Tonk Man. Andre the Giant and Ted DiBiase cannot be selected from an actual arcade unit of the game. It has however been discovered through ROM hacking that there are cheats you can use in the arcade emulator MAME to play as either one or both of them. This can cause some issues such as graphical errors like making the in-ring opponent disappear. Also, if either DBRC or Andre get a victory by submission, the game will think the player lost. This game may have seen some of the biggest improvements in the graphics of the game mainly of course due to the extra power provided by an arcade unit. The sprites are big and colourful, there are five characters on screen at one time, which is another impressive feat for the time. In between each of the matches, we are treated to animated cutscene interviews with Mean Gene Oakland. They are declaring themselves challengers to your world championship belt. No one can beat Mega Bucks. I'll put you to sleep with my million dollar dream. 
this is another impressive feat which adds so much to the overall feel of this game. We have brand new animations for each of the wrestlers. There are custom signature moves and finishes for each of the wrestlers on the roster. Nowadays, the game evokes a lot of nostalgia for these kind of pick up and play experiences and was a popular fixture in arcades at the time. We will be coming back to Technos Japan soon as they would go on to develop another very well received game in 1991, WWF WrestleFest, which we will be talking about in a later video. Next time, we will take the grappling back home. We'll be talking about the 1990 home release, WWF WrestleMania Challenge, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and Commodore 64. Did you play WWF Superstars in the arcades? Which tag teams would you think fit into a purely tag team based wrestling game today? Sound off in the comments. Like the video if you did, subscribe and hit the bell if you would, share if you can. This has been a Foul Original. Thanks for watching. See you next time.